Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And if you've clicked on this video, it's because you're interested in losing fat, also keeping your muscle mass and looking to maximize both of those at the same time. So what we're gonna cover off is exactly how you can work out your calorie deficit. And that's going to be dependent on your body fat percentage. We're not gonna give you some just arbitrary number like eat 500 calories less per day because this is what the entire internet says. We're going to look at the evidence and the science and we're going to maximize your fat loss maximize your potential muscle gain and get both of them done at the same time. Now you've probably been around the internet and you've probably heard that don't eat below 1200 calories per day or don't eat below 1600 calories per day because if you eat below a certain amount, your muscle is gonna literally fade away into oblivion, you're gonna be a skeleton and your metabolism is gonna crash and gonna burn. Now this is absolutely not the case. When you are the highest in body fat, meaning if you're say obese to morbidly obese, this is when your calories can and should be set to the lowest amount, respective to your body fat percentage. And then as you get leaner, as you start getting towards more athletic or even say contest prep lean, this is when you need to diet on the most amount of calories. And this isn't just my opinion. There have been multiple meta-analysis studies done on this, and I'm gonna link those below. And I'm gonna show you what your calorie deficit percentage could possibly be depending on where you are in terms of your body fatness. Right, so here is the how fast can you lose weight chart. Now, keep in mind, this is the maximum amount of weight you would want to lose. Perfect world scenario is you don't lose any weight at all and your measurements keep coming down. That's exactly where I would want everyone to be. But usually it's not the case. So over here on the left hand side, you've got the category. So how overweight is the person or what is their current body fat percentage categorized as? The fat percentage is the clarification of what that specific category is. So for example, obese would be 26% plus for males or females, you would be 39% or over. The deficit is going to be dependent on how much body fat that you carry. The higher your body fat percentage, the higher the deficit can be. So for example, someone who is obese, they can eat 50% of their total daily energy expenditure or more potentially going up to a protein sparing modified fast. The maximum amount or percentage of body weight loss per week is going to be in this last column. So for example, someone who's overweight, we don't want them losing any more than 1.5% of their total body weight per week. Anything higher than these numbers, likely they're at risk of losing lean mass. Now, as you can see, the leaner that you get, which means the less body fat that you have, the higher in calories you need to eat relative to your maintenance calories. Someone who is in athletic shape, so they're around 8 to 15% as a male or 14 to 24% as a female, can only diet on around 5 to 25% of their calorie deficit. Now for someone who's carrying a little bit more weight, so for example, the far majority of people who I see on a daily basis would be between the average up until the obese category. So the majority of people who I would usually train are going to be anywhere from a 20 to 40% deficit, all the way up to potentially a 50% deficit. A good sweet spot that I personally find that majority of people can adhere to is going to be anywhere from about a 20 to 40% deficit most of the time. And I usually would say that's where most people should start their calorie deficit from, unless obviously you're in athletic shape or you're in contest prep. Now, most people's arguments against this is going to be the lowering calories you go, the more at risk you are of losing lean mass. Now, I just want to emphasize this is why your body fat is important to how low in calories you can go. And there is a difference between how low you can go versus how low you should go. So to put this plainly, the more overweight that you are, the closer that you are to say obese or morbidly obese, the lower in calories you can go because your body has so much body fat it is willing to freely give it up. It's available to put all of that fat into your bloodstream to use as an energy source. As you become leaner and you start moving down this scale between obese to say overweight, average or athletic, you don't have as much body fat to cover the size of the deficit. You need to eat more calories when you're leaner compared to when you're obese or overweight. And these numbers are set up to maximize the amount of fat loss that you can lose and the lean mass that you can retain or potentially even gain lean mass over the course of the program. Now there is a difference between what you can potentially achieve versus what you're actually willing to do. And I do want to emphasize that. So for example, if you are say overweight and you could potentially go up to a 50% deficit 
Does that mean you're actually going to stick to your calories eating a 50% deficit? Possibly, possibly not. I personally like to let my clients decide how low they go in calories within our given deficit ranges. Now, just because this chart specifically says that if you're overweight, you should be between the 30 to 50% deficit. And for you, you're not going to be able to manage that long term. If you went down to a 20 or 25% deficit, that's perfectly fine. You will still lose body fat. It just won't be at the maximum rate that your body will be able to put fat into your bloodstream to burn on a daily basis. It'll just be slightly slower results, but consistent results are also better than inconsistent results. I do believe that having the knowledge and understanding that this is the potential of where you can be and then you deciding your personal range and what feels good for you, provided it fits within this chart, you get to decide how aggressive your fat loss diet is. I do wanna emphasize that ideally, you should be strength training. So strength training with the idea of progressive overload, meaning that you're just always doing a little bit more than the last session, trying to at least maintain your muscle and or gain muscle at the same time because protein is also muscle sparing. If you have the combination of strength training, protein, you're more than likely going to build muscle over the long term, even if you are in a deficit. Now, the next follow-up question I get from this is how do I work out my body fat percentage and how do I work out my daily maintenance calorie? So for working out your body fat percentage, usually there's two recommendations. So number one would be to go and get a DEXA scan done, which can be costly. But if you do have one in your area, it's probably going to be currently the most accurate way to assess your body fat percentage. Alternatively too, if you don't want to shell out $100 for a DEXA scan, there is a website that you can use. Again, it won't be 100% accurate, but it will give you a ballpark figure in terms of where you should be starting. I'm going to leave the link to this website in the description below. Now to work out your maintenance calories, I also have a free calorie calculator. That link will also be in the description below. This is the exact same calorie calculator that I use for myself and all of my high-end paying clients. So you are now educated more than you were about five minutes ago. You can use this information to get you the best possible fat loss results in the shortest amount of time and also still potentially build muscle depending on how advanced you are as a trainee. If you found this helpful, please do make sure you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, you can go over to my Instagram, send me a message on there, drop in a comment below. If there's any other topics you would like me to cover in the future, again, pop those in the comments below as well. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.